Good afternoon. My name is Danny. Welcome to Easy Eight. Uh, this is an unprompted, unscheduled uh, product review. The first one I've done for a long, long time. Uh, many of you probably aren't expecting me to be online right now, so aren't tuning in, but that's absolutely fine. Um, so today's um, little mission. I've picked up a new product. I haven't played around with it yet. I haven't opened it to see what it's like. Uh, and I wanted to kind of uh, do that online with you guys live so that you can see it now or play it back and get an idea uh, of what this product is. If you've looked at the description of this video, uh, you probably already realized that this product is a uh, transpirator which is a fluid designed for the airbrush um, to act as a, like a medium and is produced by Amo Mig Jimenez. I hope I said that right. Amo Mig Jimenez. Cool. Um, so without further ado, I'll take you over to the workbench. We can have a little look at it. Where is my workbench? Here it is. Cool. So it's a very small bottle. You can buy this in larger bottles. This is a 17 milliliter bottle. I think you can buy it in at least a, a 60 milliliter as well. So a much bigger bottle if you're going to be using a lot of it. I've not got any experience with this whatsoever. Uh, so I thought I'd just pick up the little one to, to get going with it. Now, the idea of this product is it's supposed to be like a glaze medium. So a little bit like Citadel's Lamium medium. Uh, where you would mix it in by brush uh, with the paints and the colors that you desire. And it would thin the product down without... Uh, disturbing the water tension like water might do um, which would leave you with ring marks or tide marks around the outside area of the blob or the bubble of that water would be, where, where that uh, paint would be um, but this is specifically designed for the airbrush now it does say on the side here acrylic product for mixing ammo acrylic paints to obtain transparent effects add different amounts of transpirator to obtain different intensities shake well before use dries completely within 24 hours i did a lot of research right before i picked it up because i thought that there are already products out there that pretty much do the same or similar um, one of those being airbrush thinner I use airbrush thinner all the time to help just thin down the consistency of my paints through my airbrush because you want them to be so so thin when they're going through because unlike regular brush paints it's just too much um, if you're putting sort of thick stuff through the airbrush and it just spatters or doesn't come out at all it just creates blockages and you don't get any any airbrushing at all um, m most airbrush paints are super thin anyway but by adding this you can control that um, viscosity if you like um, but in the past, I've created filters to go over dark colors, to have colors kind of coming through for pre-shading. Um, and I've used airbrush thinner and I happened across Transpirator. So I thought I'd buy a little bottle. It cost me just a couple of quid from a company called SNM um, Supplies. Uh, I'll put, once this video is uploaded, uh, I'll put a link to uh, the supplier in, in the comments so that you can go and have a little look for them if you want to. Um, excuse me. And I thought I'd give it a go. Now, one of the reviews that I looked at stated that it doesn't really make your paints transparent, more translucent. And I didn't understand the difference between the, those two statements. What is translucent? What is transparent? Um, and I ended up going down the little rabbit hole on YouTube, as can quite easily happen. And I discovered that, though I might be talking on such a layman's terms here, that um, there is transparent, which is like glass or clear water where you can see right through it. Then there is... Um, translucent where you can still see through it but there is a color if you like over it like looking through you know a, a green bottle or a brown bottle or something like that or stained glass and then there is opaque and then that is um, completely colored and you can't see through it and then there are different um, quantities or values that those kind of work out from to then turn into each other so translucent could become more opaque and then become completely non-transparent for example, um, so I thought I'd give this a go uh, and see what it's like. Now, if you've been watching um, uh, my Easy Eights um, painting club, online painting club on Fridays, um, you will know that I've been recently doing up a 135th Panther. I haven't done anything um, since the last week's show um, because it's been quite a busy week here for me. Um, but in the last show, I was starting to pre-shade with um, a set of modulation paints. So the idea here is I've painted the undercoat, if you like, or the, 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 the base color, which is Dunkel Gelb, the yellow. And I started by pre-shading. So I've got these shadow colors all over. I did a little bit of filter over the top with this one, uh, with the hull here. 
and as you can see i use a thin uh, sorry airbrush thinners and i went you know very very gently over the whole thing and it misted it down i don't know if that's a good term misted it down you know what I'm trying to say. And then there's the turret here, which you can see uh, is the, the contrast between those two colors is much more stark, much more evident. And that's because that is just straight from the airbrush. I haven't done anything else to it. I've also got some wheels here because in the last episode, I was having a lot of trouble with my airbrush and there was a blockage. It was causing me all sorts of problems. I was playing around with pressures on the compressor and I was playing around with different viscosities of the paints that I was pushing through. And I was getting some pretty undesirable results when I was pre-shading all the wheels for it. There's a lot of wheels. Um, and I wanted to do some of the wheels different colours anyway, because I want to do them like that they've been replaced, that they're still in the uh, sort of primer red colours. Um, and these are a couple of wheels that didn't come out very well, and I might use these as the replacements. If I bring this right up to the camera and bring my light up, you might be able to see here. Um, basically, that it was so thin and it was so so blocked the airbrush i've got this really awful looking sort of patina effect if you're trying to get that then well done me but generally i was just trying to make some shading this is going to be on the inside of the wheels you won't really see it but i thought this was a good one to kind of practice um that transpirator on and then i've got this one here as well and i was just gonna have a go and a play with them and then if that works out all right then i thought i would just have a little go at, um doing a different uh, percentage or different ratio of transpirator with some different colors on the turret if it all goes wrong it doesn't really matter I can just spray over and start again though I'd rather not go backwards um, but I've also got a piece of paper here as well to practice on which is my um, my spray sheet if you like I like to have a piece of paper when I'm doing my airbrush because I'm not one of those people that likes to spray all over the um, all over the work mat here I like to keep that as clean as I can just for you know housekeeping so um, I have some modulation colors, uh, Dunkel Gelb Base. This is the color here that I started with. And then the idea is that you work down to the shadows and then you work your way back up again. So I used the shadow color here um, to give me the dark intensity color. And then uh, I'm on the hull, I used Dark Base, which is a slightly um, darker version of that yellow color, somewhere between the shadow and the yellow. Um, and this is what I'm going to use to make a filter to go over the top. I'm gonna to add a percentage of this and the transpirator uh, into my airbrush to see what effect I get. Now, Ammo Mig or Ammo or Ammo Migaminas, this brand are particularly good with their dropper bottles because you might be able to hear if I put it inside my microphone, there's an agitator ball in them. And as far as I'm aware, all of their dropper bottle paints at least come with agitator um, balls in. And that's just a little bit extra, a little bit further then AK, AK Interactive, make incredibly good quality paints by, no, don't get me wrong, by any stretch, they, these guys are really, really good, but no agitator ball. So, yeah, go figure. I'm just going to make sure that I give this a really, 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 really good shake. Now, on, my, on the last show for Online Painting Club, I was talking about uh, a video that I was inspired by um, to pre-shade my panther. Um, by a gentleman um, who it, it was doing a, uh, a tiger in the same sort of colors and it was just phenomenal uh, I'm not really going to go in too much depth on that one uh, if you want to know more then you can just go back to episode 20 uh, of online painting club you'll find it in one of my other playlists um, and it is linked in the in the comments um, underneath the video so if you want to go and have a look at transpirator, transpirator being used by someone who knows what they're doing uh who is particularly good at what they do uh, then you should definitely head on over to episode 20. um so uh, when i was watching that gentleman use his um transpirator with his paints he had his airbrush set at 1.8 for pressure and i go by um psi so i think 1.8 was is, is bar um, so i've got mine set to just around about 1.8 bar which i think is a, somewhere around about 13 to 15 psi which is roughly where i work anyway different paints and different products do have um different requirements for their um for the pressures basically uh, the thicker it is you want a bit more pressure behind it but too far and then you start getting a spatter right the first time i've opened this product um it's already open so i don't have to perforate or cut the end there i'm shaking it up as much as i possibly can now i think what i should do is i should probably uh put some paint in here first now I have been, I was going to say I've been instructed, I haven't been instructed. The advice that I have seen is to put in about 50-50. 
I'm not going to do an awful lot of work here. Like only a quick demo and a look into what's going on. So I'm just going to put in three or four drops and see how much that gives me. So if I just go one, two, three, four. Oh, I suppose I'll put in five. Why not? Are we going to, are we going to go six? Are you, are you, no, that's just the bubble. I thought it was going to do a drop. Okay, and let's put that dark base color down over there. And now I've got this transpirator. So now I'm going to put in the same amount of drops again. So I'll put in five in the last one. Oh, maybe I do have to perforate it. It doesn't want to come out of the nib. It's coming out very, very solid, like a gum at the end. Interesting. Maybe it is slightly gummed up. You can see inside the bottle that it is liquid, but perhaps that just needs clearing out. I will get my... I've got a spiky thing here somewhere. No, I haven't got a spiky thing. Let's just give it a squeeze and see what happens. There we go. Maybe it just kind of dried up or something in the in the bottleneck there. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and four. Five. Okay, cool. So for different qualities of filter, if I want it to be a thinner colour, I would obviously put in a larger percentage of the transpirator. Now on the video of inspiration that I was talking about, the gentleman uses commonly between 50 to 75% transpirator. If you're making particularly thin um, glaze to go over the top you probably want 75% now I can already see the difference in the properties of the paint that is in the hopper here normally the, the paint would would stick to the side of the hopper quite a bit and be quite thick today it is not and it's running much much freer so that has really really diluted that down just wash my brush off there okay moment of truth I'm gonna quickly test it out on this color here this is the dark base color here as you can see on this piece of paper so I thought I'd just give it a quick gentle it's very easy to control now you can see it's going down I'll bring it closer to the to the camera in a minute so you can see a bit better I know my lights do kind of wash it out a little bit but over here I've got some pretty strong areas it is covering it's covering so thin you can see the color that I've got in the hopper but also the color underneath is really still shows through so this is going to help a lot with pre-shading so that I can still have the colors of Dunkel Gelb all of these lighter colors but I can still have all those pre-shaded areas showing through now it looks to me like it is going down a bit blotchy and that might be because I need a bit more pressure I recently cleaned my airbrush out I suck it for quite some time in, um, in the ultrasonic bath because I had some really bad blockages I spent quite a long time cleaning it and it might be that inside here there's a little spring that um, allows pressure for the trigger might be a bit on the tight side but if I push my pressure up just a little bit more and see what happens actually just a little bit more control I've actually gone through that very very quickly that is now empty interesting obviously the thinner um, a paint is going to be then the quicker you are going to go through it so back to the the paint and I'm going to go with this one over um, the wheel colors that I've got so one two three four five I'm gonna put six in why not let's do six and I'm gonna put six drops of this in one, two, three, four, five, six. That's quite a sturdy bottle trying to push that out. Okay, I need my brush back in. I haven't dried it off yet. Okay. Give it a quick mix in the hopper. Exactly the same consistency as a minute ago, which is good, I suppose. <laughs> okay, got a little bit of spatter coming out there at the bottom. So I don't want to go too heavy. I'm going to go nice and light. 
so just a nice gentle trigger action. Okay, well let's have a go on this wheel here. This is the um, the road wheel for the Panther that I, I one of them that I ruined. Um, so I'm just going to go over it now and just see if I can see see how much this transpirator affects the colour. It's actually quite an interesting uh, result. It is as I thought it would do. Allowing the colour of the shadow to still show through, but the colour of this particular paint is now the dominant colour on this road wheel. Um, so that's really, really cool. I actually went a little bit heavy on that last trigger pull just there, uh, which is probably a bit heavier than what I would do. This particular colour isn't a colour that I would use to um, put a filter over um, the shadow. You actually would pre-shade the areas or I want to pre-shade the areas like I've done on this side of the wheel here pre-shade and then in the lighter areas over here I would apply this color so that's what I'm going to do now and then at the end of all of the um, highlights I would then go back over with the original um, Dunkel Gale base color the one that I started with and put a really really thin layer all the way over and that will be about 75% transpirator so on one side of this road wheel I've got the shadow and on the other side, I've got the highlight or the unshadowed bit. Just making sure it's not going to spatter too much. I have taken the guard of my um, needle off of my airbrush so that it's a bit easier to clean because I think it's gumming up a little bit. Or oh, I'm getting droplets building up. In the, yeah, it's exactly it on the needle there. Okay, cool. Now, what I'm expecting that to do is to just soften the transition edges from where the shadow um, became the, the not shadow. <laughs> this is a completely unscripted video, as you can tell. Um, so that when I come back in with highlights, I will soften this light area bit by bit, per a slight bit more highlight in there. I won't go too light on the wheels because they're actually going to be uh, in a quite a dark area of the tank anyway. Um, and then I will come over and hit the whole wheel later on with... Um, with the, with the original Dunkel Gale base. Let me just try it on this one here again. I'm going to go a little bit uh, lighter on the back side of this one here because it's not as bad as the other one. Um, so I'm just going to give it a little. Again, got a bit of spatter on there. I need to learn to control this one, obviously. Interesting. It softens down the intensity of the shadow, but clearly you can see that that is still, you can see by the background on the paper that that is still a, a very dark color where flip it over and you can see contrast between the two colors there. So yeah, it's interesting with different layers of different highlights, it could be quite an interesting effect. It is still spraying on quite blotchy and I wonder if that's just because of my control or if it's because of my airbrush or my pressure. I'm going to bring the pressure right down because this is a thin paint. So we'll see what happens. Let me just put a bit of air through. See what happens now. So you might be able to see on this piece of paper here, I'm getting quite a blotchy spatter. isn't ideal it's not what I want so maybe I should practice by putting the pressure up a bit more I do seem to have more luck with a higher pressure which is quite weird anyway what I could do is I could get another wheel, I suppose, and I could practice in a minute when I've emptied the hopper out is by going over with some airbrush thinner and just doing a little bit of a comparison there, um, which I'll probably do now. Why not? An interesting fact now, I'm just trying to empty the hopper out by um, just unloading it with, with maximum trigger and it's not so spatter. So that's an interesting one. Right, I do need a little bit of water just to push through, push that through. 
just clean that out quickly. And I'm going to have a look at the comparison between that and thinner. The reason I'm going to do this is because I saw another demonstration on another video looking at the properties between manufacturers of paint because different uh, manufacturers of paint will have different properties in themselves despite them being the same color. I know from this particular video um, that perhaps I will link in the description of this video when it's uploaded um, that the transpirator doesn't work so well with Tamiya paints. Um, obviously it has to be an acrylic paint because it's an acrylic transpirator um, but it doesn't have that greater quality so you actually get much better quality with the same effect but actually using airbrush thinner um, but with AK and with Vallejo and with Ammo the transpirator does seem to be slightly better in the hands of someone who knows what they are doing so now I'm gonna go with a couple of drops of Dunkle Gale base let's just do three one, two, three, that is, oh, and we're gonna go four. Okay, cool. That is a dropper bottle that needs a really good clean because <laughs> it's coming out sideways. Okay, and I've got airbrush thinner. Uh, this is just standard Vallejo airbrush thinner. You can buy it in really big uh, bottles, but I find it a little bit easier to use um, in the studio here, with the little dropper bottle. So I just filled this one up from the large one. And I'm going to put in four drops because that's what I did with the other one. So one, two, three, four. Now I often use thinner just as a part of my painting mix. I use it um, with my paint. I put in a, a drop of flow improver and I put in a drop of um, thinner and that tends to give me some really good effects. And then if I want it a bit thinner, then I just put in uh, a larger quantity of, of ever thinner. mix it up in the hopper and I've got a very very similar viscosity and I'm going to look at the scene now about the control that I get by doing exactly the same thing much more spatter and it flows much quicker so perhaps I would want to not put in so much thinner as I would do transpirator but the effect is very very similar there is much more vapor in the air and the color goes on stronger so the transpirator definitely has that transparent quality I know that sounds like a very obvious thing to say um, but you would think that an airbrush thinner has the same sort of quality or properties to it um, it wins against the uh, against the airbrush thinner. If you wanted um, more opaqueness, like I said at the beginning of the video, then perhaps you would want to mix it up a little bit. You want to use some transpirator for uh, thinner ones, and then um, for more opaque colour, so more heavy dominance of colour, go with a bit of airbrush thinner perhaps. So let me just get another wheel here. Doesn't matter. I can always go back over these, and let's pick this road wheel here. This one actually looks like quite a good wheel. Oh no, it's absolutely rubbish. <laughs> okay, I do need to go back and have a look at them. So on one side here, I've got the shadow all over the back of it. And then on this side, uh, I think this is actually an inside wheel. Um, you can see that I put a little bit of shadow and on one side there isn't. So I'm just gonna go on the back side here and I'm just gonna very, very lightly feather it with this thinner mix. I have so lightly pushed that trigger there, the difference is is very, very noticeable. Um, so here is the mix with the transpirator, and here is the mix with the thinner. Um, I was much, much lighter with the thinner, and the quantities, the ratios are, are the same. Um, and you can see, even under my bleaching out studio lights here, that the one with the thinner is much, much more opaque and it washes out that shadow. So once I get a bit more used to using this product and I get the control that I need to and the flow sorted out, I think the transpirator is going to be a really, really good product for um, using filters and things. I don't want that spatter effect, so I've really got to learn that control, but you know, that's part of learning to paint right that's that's not a problem that's a really interesting property 
and I'm glad I, did. I wasn't actually when I was thinking about doing this video I wasn't actually going to do a, um, a comparison between the two because well it already exists out there and I don't want this channel to necessarily be a tutorial um, but that's quite an, an important lesson it actually comes out really quite strong but if I'm blocking out colors like I was saying with this wheel here where I've got a shadow on one side I don't want to put a filter over it yet I actually just want to hit the um, the lighter area so that I can build up my my graduation of uh, highlights using a bit of thinner might actually be a little bit better anyway I think that's quite a valuable little lesson there what about this wheel here let's see again if I could do this one this one here you can see that there's a lot of overspray a lot of spatter in the lighter area here and I want to kind of soften that down so maybe a bit thinner here is the way forwards very nice I know that my camera and my light setup isn't the best here in this studio, uh, but I do have a Facebook page uh, for Easy8, where when we go live with the online painting club, uh, the community regularly get together and put all the pictures of uh, pictures up that they, they've been putting. I'll, I'll put pictures of this up here as well, so that if you see this video and you want to go and have a look at the effects of it, then uh, I'll more than happily put those photos up over on Facebook. For now, I'm not going to do the turret here on this tank because I think I've got a little bit of control to learn when it comes to using that product just to try and prevent that spray and it might be that I just need to tinker around with the seal inside uh, this part of the airbrush down here where the, the trigger spring is or it might be that I need to play around with pressures or just different um, ratios of transpirator to paint. Um, and that might that ratio might change from color to color even brand to brand um, so it's gonna be quite an interesting little journey um, I'm just gonna empty out my hopper here wonderful and I will flush that out once I've come off air so let me come back away from the workbench wonderful that's a really interesting product and it certainly has a different property over the airbrush thinner which I was hoping it would do because even though it's fairly cheap if a product exists and is you know for a particular reason but something that you've already got does the job already then you've kind of there's no need to really have that product um, but I'm glad that it does something different that's cool um, if you want to find us on any of our other platforms then at the bottom of the screen here you can see that we're not just here on YouTube that we're on Facebook and we're on Instagram uh, Facebook is our probably our most regularly used and most active platform and you're more than welcome to come on over like and follow the stuff that we do on there under the community tab on that page is where all of our community guys put all of the pictures of their stuff on there it's been particularly active of late uh, so I do encourage you to go on over there and have a look at the stuff that's going on and you will get posts from me as well uh, as for YouTube here please uh, don't forget to um, like and subscribe to our channel because every little bit really does help us and we are growing and we've got a really nice following now and we are followed around the world which is really really nice even though we've got just a few subscribers it's still nice to be liked right anyway um, that's it for me for this little product review i will put some more details about this product and where i got it from in the description of this video once it's uploaded and i'm allowed to interact with it um and if you've got any questions then please don't hesitate to get in contact with me either through facebook or you could just drop it into the comments of this video and let me know what you think of this product uh have you ever heard of it before or have you got experience with it uh, if you've got anything to say about it then please do let me know um i've been danny this has been Easy8 and it's been a very simple product review. Please join us on Fridays at no, no, from 7 o'clock till 9 o'clock at GMT. I'll put my teeth back in for that show, I promise. And I will see everybody then. So take care for now. See you soon. Bye bye.